In an earlier video we showed that the volume of a torus obtained by rotating a region bounded by the circle x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 9 about the line x equal to 10. That volume was 144 pi squared. We use the washer method to do it. This time we're going to use the shell method to show the same result. So first we're going to take uh, this circle and solve it for y as a function of x. Now a circle is not a function so we're going to have two functions the upper semicircle and the lower semicircle. So y minus 3 squared <clears throat> equals 9 minus x minus 2 squared. Let's take square root of both sides. On the left we get y minus 3. On the right we get plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x minus 2 squared. And so y is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x minus 2 squared. The plus is the upper semicircle. The minus is the lower semicircle. Let's sketch this region and then set up the integral. So we have a circle whose center is 2, 3. So that's 2 and 3. And radius is 3. So we get one point here, one point over here, as far to the right as we can go. That's x equals 5 one point over here. This is when x is minus 1 and then one point up here. These four will enable us to sketch, give a rough sketch of the circle. It looks something like that. Now here is the axis of revolution. That's the line x equal to 10. Let's mark these. The upper semicircle is y equals 3 plus the square root of 9 minus x minus 2 squared and the lower semicircle y equals 3 minus the square root of 9 minus x minus 2 squared. Let's pick an x between minus 1 and 5. Let's say the x is here. We're going to track this vertical slice of the area and as it moves across this line 180 degrees it will end up here and the full 360 degree rotation yields this cylindrical shell. This problem comes down to expressing the surface area of this cylindrical shell as a function of x. So recall when we have a cylindrical shell that looks like this is just a cylinder without the top and the bottom and this is r, the radius, and this is height h. To find the surface area, we cut along this height and unfold it. When we unfold it, it becomes a rectangle. The width of the rectangle is the height of the cylinder. And then the length is what used to be the circumference of radius r, so it's 2 pi r and therefore the area is going to be 2 pi r h. So the problem comes down to is expressing r and h as functions of x. So let's go ahead and take a look at this picture and our integral for the volume will be this. We have 2 pi out in front then the integral. Notice we're taking the x is between minus 1 and 5. The radius is this distance right over here now from the y-axis to the axis of rotation, that's 10 units. And then this part is x, so the radius is 10 minus x. And then the height is right here. It's a difference between the y-coordinates of the two semicircles. So first the top, 3 plus the square root of 9 minus x minus 2 squared minus the bottom, 3 minus the square root of 9 minus x minus 2 squared. Now let's simplify this. Notice here that 3 and 3 cancel and we get 2 
of the square root. So this looks like this. We have 2 pi times the integral from minus 1 to 5, 10 minus x times 2 square root of 9 minus x minus 2 squared dx. Let's factor out the 2. So this is 4 pi times the integral from minus 1 to 5, 10 minus x times the square root of 9 minus x minus 2 squared dx. All we have to do is to evaluate this integral. We're going to use substitution. So let's uh, use u. Let u be x minus 2. Notice that du is equal to dx. And if we solve for x, x is equal to u plus 2. Now x is between minus 1 and 5, so let's see what happens when x is minus 1. u equals minus 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. When x equals to 5, u is equal to 5 minus 2, which is 3. Let's rewrite this integral in variable u. So I'll keep this one here, and this is what it looks like. We have 4 pi out in front then minus 1 to 5 becomes minus 3 to 3. 10 minus x, but x is u plus 2. Square root, 9 minus x minus 2 squared, that's 9 minus u squared, and dx is du. So now this is equal to, we have 4 pi times the integral from minus 3 to 3, 10 minus 2, that's 8, minus u times the square root of 9 minus u squared du. Let's break it up into two integrals. The first one is 32 pi, integral from minus 3 to 3, the square root of 9 minus u squared du, minus 4 pi times the integral from minus 3 to 3 u times the square root of 9 minus u squared du. We have to evaluate these two integrals. Let's start with the second integral. We want to find antiderivative of u times square root of 9 minus u squared. So we'll make a substitution. Let, let's use variable w. Suppose that w is 9 minus u squared. dw is minus 2u du. So minus one-half dw is going to replace u du. Now u is between minus 3 and 3, so when u equals negative 3, w is 9 minus 9, which is 0. When u equals to 3, w is also 0. And that's a big clue of what will about the value of this integral. So we have 4 pi times the integral from 0 to 0, u du is minus 1 half dw, and then square root of 9 minus u squared, that's square root of w. Well, even without simplifying this, since this is an integral from 0 to 0, it's going to be 0. So the second integral is 0, and all we have to do now is evaluate the first integral, and the problem is solved. The first integral was 32 pi times the integral from minus 3 to 3 times the square root of 9 minus u squared du. Now this cannot be solved until we learn technique called trigonometric substitution, but we can evaluate it really without, without calculus. Let z equal to square root of 9 minus u squared. Now this is just an upper semicircle in a u z plane. So this is u and this is z. This looks like this. It's an upper semicircle. The center is at the origin. Radius is 3. So the integral minus 3 to 3 of square root of 9 minus u squared is nothing more than the area of the semicircle which is 9 pi divided by 2. And that's the integral. And now the final answer is going to be 32 pi in front times the value of the integral 9 pi over 2 and this is 16 times 9 
times pi squared, 16 times 9 is 144. So the final answer is 144 pi squared, exactly as it was when we solved this problem by using the washer method.